So today we're going to work on the building UI, namely these buttons down here. And when you click them, it'll pull up this building interface and you will be able to click and build towers and it will switch and build these other types of towers. Now these other parts of the UI, I'm not gonna go over quite yet. That's gonna be in another video on menus. But before we get started, I'd like to just do a few house cleaning things of things I changed from the last video. Basically, I made the map bigger. I changed its size to 32 for the hypotenuse. And I made the A-star offset a little bit larger. I haven't dealt with resizing yet. Uh, when you resize the window, we'll just worry about that in the future. I made these changes just so I could get a better idea of what the game might look like in the end, so I could have a better idea of what the UI should look like. Now the sprites that I use for the UI are from Kenny again, and I will leave a link in the description. And the last thing is, is I forgot to mention that I added an offset to the alien ships to make them appear as they're flying above the path. Eventually we're going to add particles and shadows underneath, so that way you can see exactly where they are on the path. I just have an offset of 100 in the Y position in the enemy template scene. So just a quick glimpse of the inspector of what the changes were. The camera was shifted down and the zoom was changed to 1.6. But what we're going to work on today is actually this build tool right here, which is just a node 2D that's a container for my building interface, which is this uh, little icon up here. And all it is is a sprite with the same PNG that I'm going to use for the towers. Now I did have to offset the position a little bit by negative 20 to make it line up with the tile map properly. And the scale is 0.8 just because I thought the tower looked a little bit fat. And the only other thing that I added to this would be a simple shader that will just change the sprite to yellow. Now you can't just tell it to change every pixel to yellow because that'll change this entire rectangle here to yellow this line is saying is it will mix in the color yellow based on the alpha of the pixel. So if it is clear, the alpha will be zero and it will not mix in any yellow. If the alpha is one, it will basically turn the pixel yellow. So I have another video that it kind of explains in this in more detail and I'll put a link to that also in the description. So jumping into the variables that we'll need to make this happen, we're actually gonna keep track of a very simple game state of whether we are building or whether we are not building. And we're gonna start off with that being false. So we are we will not actually be showing the interface right away. Now we're going to keep track of yellow and red. And I just picked a random yellow and a random red to change these two. And one thing to note is I also turned down the alpha a little bit. So it's a little bit transparent when it's moving around the map. And the rest of these variables will go over as we get to them. So eventually I'll show you how we get into the build mode using the UI buttons at the bottom of the screen. But for right now, we're just going to focus on the tool. And it's going to check in the physics process to see if we are in the build mode, and we will then update the build tool. Each frame when we update the build tool, we're going to get the mouse position, we're going to see which tile in the map it is on, and then we're going to set the position of that build tool to the position of that tile. And that's how we get the nice little snapping between tiles is we're setting it to the position of the tiles and nothing in between. We have to check to see if we can actually build there. So we're going to look at the tile that the mouse is currently over and we'll see if it is grass. Now the second check, we're going to keep track of the current color because if we don't do this, this will run every single time that we are on top of grass, and that will reset these variables every frame, even though they are already that value. And so we'll check to see if it is yellow. If it is yellow, then we can skip that. If it is supposed to be changed to yellow, we're going to turn change the current color to yellow. We'll turn can build to true. We also have to set the shader parameter of the uniform current color to that variable that we're keeping track of. So this is the uniform in the shader, and this is the variable in this script. The same thing goes for if it's not the grass. We cannot build on anything that isn't the grass, and this is the same check to make sure we don't run this over and over and over again. And so if it isn't grass, we will change the color to red, we cannot build there, and we will update that shader parameter again. Also, if you notice this current tile is not local to this function, we're going to keep it in a variable at the top of the script. That way we can use it later when we want to build a tower because we're going to have to know where we are building the tower. So before we can build the tower, we're going to have to have a scene to actually place there. So I have a tower template scene, which is just a couple simple node 2Ds with a sprite in it. This is just a container for all the elements that I'll add in the future. And I had to add an offset to this node 2D of negative 16 to make it line up with the tile map. Now I used an inherited scene 
so you click the tower template. I have these two scenes, the red tower and the purple tower, that inherit from the tower template. Now the only difference between the purple tower and the red tower right now are the texture of this tower, but in the future we're going to have other things such as range or other effects on it that we will want to be different. Now the reason why I am using an inherited scene is if you change something in the base scene that everything else inherits from, such as the position, it will update it in all of the other scenes that you have. So even if you have 10 different towers that all inherit from here, you can change all 10 of the positions with one change in the base scene, which is very helpful later on when you have a lot more going on in a scene. So now that we have our tower scenes finished, we're going to preload them into a variable so we can easily make instances of them later on. So in the physics process, after we update the build tool, we check to see if we have clicked the action button, which in the input map I just have as the left click on the mouse. And if we do that, we will build a tower. So when we build a tower, we're going to see if we can build, going back to the idea of if it's a grass tile or if it's trees or something else. And this other check has to do with the buttons, which I'll show you in just a minute. But if we can build a tower, we're going to set the cell of that tile that we are currently on to 16, which is just a green tile right now, and you have to change it from the grass. That way you can't build multiple towers on one tile. We will make an instance of the current tower, so either the red or the purple tower, and we will set the global position to the current tiles position, and we will add that instance to the tower container, which is a Y sort. Now I've shown you everything that happens when you're in the build mode or the build state, but we haven't actually figured out how we're getting into the build mode yet, which brings me to the buttons in the UI. So the game UI, I'm going to make a future video about how to make these buttons work with the menus. So we're just going to focus on the buttons down here. Now when it comes to UI, you can watch a lot of tutorials on how to do it, but really you just have to get in there and practice with the different types of control nodes because there are just tons of different nodes that do almost the same thing. And you just have to practice figuring out what you like best. So what I did on this is I have a canvas layer. That way I can adjust the map lighting and such without covering up the UI if I don't want to do that. So I have it in a separate canvas layer. And then I have a nine patch rect, which is just a texture from the Kenny UI pack. Make the patch margins two, which if you just play with these numbers, you can see what that does. Basically it makes the edges larger or smaller. One other thing I like to do with these large bars right here that are kind of the backdrop of my UI, I change the self-modulate alpha down to about half, that way you can kind of see what's behind it. I just like the look of that better. Now the difference between the modulate and the self-modulate is if you adjust the alpha in just the modulate, it will change the alpha of all the children. So also these buttons and the texture recs will be half alpha. But if you just do the self-modulate, then it will only affect the blue. Now the layout of this nine patched rect is a bottom wide and then the and then the H box container is a full rect with the alignment being center and I added a custom constant of 15 pixel separation. The buttons are finally what are actually going to get us into the build state. So we have a button here with three different types of textures. The hover is important if you want the player to know that the mouse is on top of it so they know what they're clicking. The pressed is good feedback for the player to know that they actually clicked the button. To make this, I had to expand it and I set the minimum size to 80. And then the texture rect, I did the same thing. I put the texture I wanted in, I expanded it, and I set the size to 50 by 60. Then I believe I just centered it on into the middle of the button. The important part of the button really is this signal here. So we have a button down, so in other words you pressed the button, and then looking at the signal I have a string here which you can just go here and click string and then you click add and then you type in what it is. So if you click the red tower button I'm going to send the string red tower. If you click the purple tower I will send the string purple tower and that is important because when you go and look at this function it's going to take that string and look in the list 
of both the tower list and the UI tower list. Now this is important because the current tower is what's going to decide what scene to load when you actually try to build something, and the UI tower list is going to tell the build tool which texture to put into the build interface sprite. Now I use the same string, that way I don't have to have two variables sent along, since these are fair, these are kind of connected anyway. So when I click the red button, it'll look up both the scene and the texture with the same string. So after we set the current tower and we set the texture of the build interface, we are going to turn the build mode to true and we're going to show the build tool because when we start the game, I'll probably have it hidden. Now going back to this not in menu, I'm going to go ahead and take that out and show you why it's important. So when you click this button, and you don't have that menu check, it will automatically build a tower with the same click. And that is not what I want to have happen. So typically, when you have a button, you go to the filter and you tell it to stop. But for some reason, when it's the same frame, it it lets the click go through to the tile map. So I have a feeling that this filter only applies to other control nodes. It stops other control nodes from getting through. So your options are ignore, which means that the button won't actually work. It's going to ignore the click when you click the button. Pass makes the button go, but it could also click any buttons or any type of UI underneath it. And stop means that once this button has recognized it, it won't let any other buttons use that click. But even though we have it on stop, it still goes to the tile map, so I'm assuming that this only works with other UI. So how we fix this is the buttons have a signal for when the mouse enters inside of the button or exits it. So if we just look at this, all it does is turn the variable in menu from true to false. So Basically, all it does is if the mouse is inside or hovering over one of the buttons, then I will not be able to build a tower with a click. Now, I also have it that you can right click and get out of the build mode. And that's just a simple check in the physics process for the input cancel, which is I routed to right click. Then we will build mode false and we will hide the build tool. So if you have any questions about this video, please let me know. And I know that this project is getting to the point to where I have a lot to keep track of, so I probably missed something along the way. So if something doesn't make sense or doesn't work, make sure you ask. And if you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comments.